It's been six months since the last bunker video. I think it's time to make the next episode. I'm gonna be taking out the rebar that we used over the top of the vent, and I'm gonna turn this into an escape hatch. Let's do this. Safety first. Got the, uh, the rebar off, now time to make a ladder system. For those that are new to the channel, I make outdoor videos about pretty much anything and everything to do with the outdoors, except this one. This series is all about the indoors or the inside. For those that don't know, this is an old World War II air raid shelter that is not actually attached to my house, but is right next to it in the back garden. It's not on the original deeds of the house because the house was built in 1910. It's an old farmhouse and obviously World War II wasn't until 1940s. So yeah, it was built later than the house. So it wasn't on the original deeds. It was in a pretty sorry state when I found it. So I decided to do a YouTube series on renovating the bunker. And if you'd like to catch up with every episode on that, I'll put a link up here and a link in the description below. Meanwhile, let's crack on with this episode. This is the reason I've not done a bunker video for six months. Sorry about the noise. If you hear helicopters and jets flying across, that's the military just doing their practices and things. It's just one of those days each week, we always get the military doing their job. So can't complain. They're trying to protect us and practice and etc. etc. Anyway, six months I've waited for this due to the coronavirus and everything like that. There's been delays with postage and I've wanted to hold back this video because I couldn't really progress on the bunker with my ideas that I had without this box. So inside is the ladder system that I'm thinking of to get out of the escape hatch. I've toyed with loads of different ideas about whether to get an actual ladder in there, a wood ladder, metal ladder, steel ladder. Although this is renovating the World War II bunker or air raid shelter, it is not restoring it. So I'm not kind of using historically correct things that they would have used back in the 1940s. It is renovating it to however I want to do it. So this is what I've come up with for the ladder system in this box. These, they are grab rails. These are 250 mil wide grab rails. They did ones that were up to 30 something mil, which would have come out here. And I don't know if they would have been too wide for the, uh, for the, the vent going up. So I went for the narrow ones and I figure really you're only going to put one foot on each of these kind of rungs anyway. You're not going to, I wouldn't stand there with two feet. I would personally just climb one then the other then the other. So these are grab rails, which look at the screws they come with. Even if this is used as a grab rail to, to kind of hold on to, how are screws that long going to really give you any kind of strength to this? I mean, that's ridiculous. So we need something that's substantially longer they're probably a bit thick i mean something like that there's the difference if i hold them by the tip <laughs> that's the screw i should be using here to allow me to put my weight on there that's not going to hold my weight that's for sure so we'll change out all the screws no problem i mean that's the rung obviously it's going to go against the wall like that look at it. this is going to be so good so yeah rather than having a fixed ladder in there I just figure let's just use these rungs and then obviously the escape hatch is going to be the next thing to do but let's get these installed i've got seven or eight in this box so we'll get through them get them out i need a masonry bit yeah i'm going to need a pilot hole first probably so four mil and then a five mil should do it let's just check the screw All right that's good Hit plugs.
So as you can imagine, the little combi drill ran out of battery fairly quickly. I'm not wasting my time. I went straight to the shop, bought myself a hammer drill. Let's get this job done a little bit quicker. Still got to sort that sump hole that's on the list. I've swept it up, tidied it in here, and there is the epic escape ladder system. It's my camera, my other one. Hello. Right, let's hope the screws were long enough and give this a test. Let's get this head cam on. Other than doing the sump hole and sealing the floor and maybe putting up some shelves, we're almost done. Okay. Hope it takes my weight. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. And I can get out. Yep, easy. Easy, look. Quick. I can get right out if I want and sit up here, but I'm then out of shot, so we'll go back down. I'm really pleased that I went for the 20, 250 mil length ones because you do only need one foot any wider and they would have got a bit clunky, but this, how is this? for awesomeness of the World War II air raid shelter renovation. This is, uh, I'm really glad I did this rather than just have a vent, an air vent and no way of getting out. Why am I doing this? Well, two reasons. There's a drip on the lens. How dare you? Go away. Hopefully that's not too bad for you guys. Because I was thinking about it and although I'm not building this, uh, you know, this is not a restoration project, this is a renovation project. Uh, I was still thinking that being a, a, a World War II kind of air raid shelter, if, if planes were flying overhead and one bomb exploded on the entrance itself over there, then there would, that would be your exit, essentially you're doomed, because if it collapsed, there's no other way out. Whereas if one maybe did that door there, entrance, and you needed to get out, you then got a secondary escape hatch, which would be here, or vice versa. Let's say this one got destroyed, then you'd have that one over there. Obviously, it's not, to, it wouldn't be able to take it, to be honest, if one did hit here. It would just probably obliterate the whole thing and it would collapse. But either way, it's just cool to know that there's two entrances and exits out of here and we're gonna sort a vent out uh, uh, on the top of this escape hatch here, kind of a, a latch system, really. So keep an eye out for that in an upcoming episode. That's not gonna be in this one, but it is definitely gonna be coming up. So the ladder system works, I'm pleased with that. I'm now gonna, I still need to seal part of the inside, especially the floor and parts of the walls at the base, which I left. I've just swept it all out, uh, but I didn't really need to because I'm now gonna be doing some more drilling down there and we're gonna work on a bit more interior stuff before we get cracking on the bigger projects. Catch you guys in a bit. So, still gotta seal this and still got to seal the floor. You can see where I put the, the kind of seeker sealant. Yeah, look guys, it's gonna get damp. It's always gonna get damp in here. Hence why I built a sump hole to put the pump in. But it'll always be a temporary sump hole, so I'm gonna fill that in, not completely, but just line it, and then be able to temporarily put the pump in and out if I need to. So I don't need to put a permanent pump in, but you can see where I put the sealant up to here, and that's where I need to go over, all around the base. And then I need to seal the floor as well, as all the stairs, I've gotta seal those, because if you can see that, I've done the walls, still wanna do the floors. So I'm thinking, this corner, the bed system. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, whether it's hammock, fixed bed, folding bed, 
Stay tuned for an upcoming episode, but I reckon that will go here. Over here, I need storage. I need a place to put any bits that I can use for bugging out, uh, food, just general survival kit on this side of the bunker. So I need to put some shelving in, maybe two rows of shelving just in here, potentially a little one in the corner. So let's crack on. I'm going, I think Dad, when I did it before, said this was six feet, around about six feet. So it's, yeah, it's pretty much six feet, maybe a little bit more, 100 and, no, it's about 183 centimetres. So I think we'll go with that, two shelves, 183 centimetres. About that height, maybe a bit lower. So I've got myself cheap. These are about two pound brackets from B&Q, which is just a, a hardware store, a very orange hardware store over here in the UK. I'm gonna go for two brackets on each shelf because I'm not putting a ton of load on it. I mean, how much can these take? They can take 20 kilos. So I'm not gonna be putting 20 kilos worth of gear on there. Anything heavy that I have will be stored on the floor. Look at this, this is my ancient African, it's got African wood in it, I can't remember, I got it in an antique store. Ancient spirit level, and it's something like African teak, I don't know, or some rare exotic wood from Africa. But look at that, that is a, a very unique speed spirit level. It's not obviously as easy as and practical to use, but it is made in Germany. Af Afromosia, Afromosia. I love it, very antique -y. So I've been using these drill bits from Erbauer. They're, honestly, I'm really impressed. I haven't, I haven't really used Erbauer stuff before. I'm usually a Bosch guy, like my Bosch. A little bit lower, but there. shelves are done, they're level. I'm pretty pleased with that, but I'm gonna give them a bit of a stain because I feel, obviously it's a real light color. And if I just stain it, it'll just give it that extra layer of protection given that it gets damp in here. Naturally, metal shelves would have been better. They're obviously a lot more durable, but for the time being, I'm quite happy with the, the wood shelves. I guess I could have another shelf underneath, but I'm figuring I've got more area to store bigger items along there. If I put another shelf underneath, I'm not going to be able to store very tall items. I've got the option over here to have a little shelf coming out, but I'm not sure yet. I don't want to eat up too much room into the bunker. And then obviously bed that side. Yeah, got these hooks up here, which I'm going to replace. I think they were for hanging lanterns or something. I'm not sure, but I'm going to try and replace those and get some, get some decent hooks in there. But let's get these stained and then we'll we're finished in that area. Go with a black paint and it's wood and metal, so I'm going to black up the brackets potentially. I'm not sure yet. I'm definitely going to actually, I guess, grey would look good, but yeah, going to paint these black. It's a bit of a thicker paint this one rather than the sort of wood stain, and uh, we'll see how it comes out.
things I wanted to change is these hooks. That one's a bit painted, but there's hooks in the corners where I think they might have hung lanterns or something. I'm going to try and replace those. I've got some stainless steel hooks here. Hopefully the raw plugs are still alright. If not, I'm going to have to maybe do another hole, but I'm hoping I can just use that existing one. I don't really need them in this corner now. There's one there because I've got the shelf, but if I'm hanging a hammock actually, I, uh, you know, it makes sense to have one corner to corner because that's the longest part of the room. And more whips. Let's just hope it actually comes out. It might break. It's so old. I'd be amazed if that actually came out. Hmm. I might either be twisting metal and it's going to snap. Or I've actually got the screw. No, I've got it. I can gauge the size now. See if I've got the right one. That's the old rusty one. Sorry about the echo as always, guys. And then that is one I got from Complete Guesswork. To be honest, I think I nailed it. I think I got that pretty much bang on. Probably a little bit longer, maybe. Yeah, I'd say it's a bit longer. Either way, that's the one. Okay, job done. Solid. Thinner. I think this might break. had a big thick screw hook and the other one had a really thin sort of uh, thinner one so I think I've got a thin one I absolutely nailed this on the whim in my my shop to the hardware store look at this I thought oh I better get some smaller ones and that has paid off That's it. There wasn't one in that far corner, so leave it at that. So one of the things I need to do is the bed, this side, but also I've got this, if I'm having a, a bed potentially, or, or a bench or maybe a table or some sort of storage that folds down, the reason I want some folding that something folding down is because it's gonna allow me more room in here. It's already a really small room. It's like six foot by five foot. I say room, bunker, air raid shelter. You know, if I have things that are all sticking out, I've then really limited my space inside here. If I have things that fold up and go against the wall, I then have a lot more space in this corner. But I am gonna put maybe a fixed shelf, either one or two in here for things like a lantern or just general things that be above the bed when it's down. It'd just be handy storage to have up here. So I'm gonna do that now from the off cuts of the other big shelves that were this side. Here's my off cut. About there, we're running out of light, folks. So that is a wrap for this particular episode. Loving the ladder, the steps, that's gonna be really good for the escape hatch. Got the shelves there, got a couple of shelves there. Lots still to sort out. Got the sump hole as a project to finish. The floor to seal, maybe another layer of sealant. And yeah, more interior work such as the bed. Oh, all sorts of awesome stuff. Well guys, I'm gonna call it a wrap there. I think made fairly good progress in this episode. I've got the, the steps obviously and things I just showed you inside the shelves. I'm pleased with it. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's a really fun, enjoyable project. And I know a lot of you have been waiting very patiently for this episode. So cheers for sticking around guys. I appreciate that. And stay tuned for the next one where 
I think I'm going to try and sort out the escape hatch at the top, which would be pretty cool. But yeah, cheers for coming along for the ride, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.